Hi, my name is Marnie Winters, and thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel. The purpose of this channel is to cover college and career information for video viewers, and today's topic will be effective study skills and how to get good grades. First, I want to start off by covering just some brief information that was covered in two other videos, effective note-taking and effective test-taking, because those two the information presented in those two videos does relate to what is going to be discussed today. Um, when you're taking notes in class, you'll want to make sure that you write clearly. You'll need to have those clear notes when you go to study for a test or when you go to do the homework. You'll want to make sure you can understand all of the information that you've written down in order to complete that homework and to study for a test to do your best. If you're having trouble reading your own handwriting, this can present a problem. So make sure to spend some time writing clearly. If writing clearly is a struggle for you and a challenge, you may want to ask your teacher if you are allowed to go to class with a laptop or a tablet or a digital device that you can type on. Make sure that you ask the teacher before you go into class with this, though, because some colleges and some teachers will not allow them in class. You'll just need to make sure that you can type fast enough to be able to take good notes, but this will be one way to resolve people who have challenges with writing clearly enough to be able to understand it later. You'll also want to make sure that you have different folders and different notebooks for each class by single subject notebooks and by two pocket folders keep all of the information for each class separate from other classes. This way you can go and locate the information that you need quicker than having to sort through one big folder or one big notebook where you have notes for four or five subjects listed in it. You want to be sure to have that information organized. When you are taking notes in class, start a new page for each different day. Make sure that you date every single page and the reason for that is so that you know what information you covered on what day. So when a teacher says to you in the middle of a class, okay, we're going to have a test on everything from this date forward, you can go to that date quickly and you know exactly where in your notes it is that you need to start studying from instead of wasting time trying to figure out where one day ended and the next day began. So make sure that you date every single page with the date at the top. You want to make sure that you attend every single class. That may sound basic, but attendance is very, very important. Even if the teachers are not taking attendance, you need to go anyway, because there'll be important information covered in each class that will help you do your homework and study for the tests. And you need to make sure that you are punctual and on time for each class. Even if it may not seem like a big deal that you're five minutes late, it really can be a big deal because some teachers will start right on the nose as soon as the class begins and they can cover a lot of information in five note in in five minutes so it'll be important for you to make sure that you are on time you'll want to make sure that you buy the books for your classes too if the books are required for a class most likely you're going to be using them and you'll need to have them so make sure that you go buy those now, with optional books, you may want to go to the first day of class and then ask the instructor if you'll actually be using those optional books in class because sometimes the optional books won't be used at all. So from a cost factor, you don't want to be spending money on books that you're not going to need or be using, especially if they're saying that an optional book for the class costs $150. Sometimes books can get really expensive, so you don't want to be spending a lot of money on something that you're never going to use or not need for the class. So the optional books, plan to go ahead and wait until the first day of class to ask the teacher if you will really need to be using that book, but plan to go ahead and get the books that are required because most likely you're going to be needing those and be using those. You'll want to make sure that you ask questions in class. It, don't be afraid to ask questions either. It's not going to be a bother. And odds are, if you've got a question, 
somebody else in the class probably has that same question. So it's not going to be a benefit just for you, it'll be a benefit for other people in the class as well. Now on to the specific study skills. When you're studying, study alone. When you study with groups or with other people, that can be a distraction. Now groups can be very, very helpful, especially if you have a team project, and in that case you won't have a choice. You'll have to meet with the team, but if it's just like a random study group that gets formed, don't count on that for 100% of your studies. Sometimes that's beneficial to you, but other times you may be the smartest one in that group and end up carrying everybody else. That's not really helping you if you're serving as a student tutor for the others in the group. So alone time will also be very important when you're studying It'll give you an ability to get through your homework, to get through your study time that you need for the classes, to be able to learn the material, to be able to go back over things that might not be so obvious or clear to you, and it will give you a chance to understand that better and be able to succeed and do better on the homework and do better on the test. So always plan to have alone time. Now, when you do have that alone study time, make sure you study in quiet. I've heard a lot of people out there say before, oh, well, I study better when I've got the TV on. I study better when I've got the radio on. I study better when I'm listening to the video game in the background. And very rarely is that actually true because whether you realize it or not, the noise can be a distraction. While you're reading, your brain is also hearing what's happening around the room. It's hearing what is happening on the TV set or on the radio. You may even get distracted enough to change the TV station or to stop the video game or to watch what other people are doing on it. Or to, if you don't like a song that your music player is playing, you skip to another song or you pick it up to search. And the same thing applies for cell phones. Stay off your cell phone when you're studying. Put it down, turn it off, keep it next to you. If you have it, just in case something happens and it, there's an emergency that happens and you need to call somebody. So you can keep it by you, but while you've got it by you, keep it turned off. Don't be, don't be tempted by that to pick it up to play games to answer every notification that pops up, to answer every text message or phone call, turn it off so you can't be disturbed. And just make sure that you study alone so that you study alone, study without all the noise going on around you so that you don't have all those distractions. Make sure that you prepare a test study guide for each class and you'll wanna, for each test, you'll wanna start this in advance. And a test study guide is a compilation of vocabulary words that you have learned about in your readings, information that you have gotten through class, things that you know that you're going, going to need on the test, and outline. Out, start off by outlining your chapters. And I know this sounds like a lot of work, but it really is gonna help you to do better on a test because you're gonna remember it. But outline your chapters, then go through on the outline and pick out all the important information in that outline that you believe you're going to be tested on. Make a test study guide that consists of vocabulary words, new terminology, lists of information, events, dates, mathematical formulas. This is all important information that you can possibly be quizzed on. Take that test study guide with you then. When you go different places, write it on loose leaf paper because then you can staple it together and you've got a test guide that is not attached to anything else. You can stick it in your backpack easily and take it with you and study when you have a few extra moments. You can give it to a friend or a dorm roommate or friends or family, anybody who's around and have them quiz you on that information. If you hear it in an auditory format, it can help you remember it better. 
So whip out that test study guide. Use it alone. Use it with other people. It'll help you do better on the tests. And then once you've got that test study guide ready, get a pack of 3x5 index cards and turn them into flashcards. Write down the vocabulary word on one side and the definition on the other. Write down the name of a list, like what events led to the War of 1812. Write that question down on one side of the card and then write all of those events down on the other side. Write down any information that you can that you can use to quiz yourself. Turn those into three by five cards. And then once you have a stack, put a rubber band around it. Those can also easily be tossed into a backpack or a purse or a small bag. You can take them with you. You can quiz yourself. You can give somebody else those three by five index cards and have them use them to quiz you. Once again, that auditory component will help you out a lot. It'll help you remember it. If you're still having trouble remembering things that you need to know, things that you need to have memorized for the test, get out some blank loose leaf paper and start writing it down. Write it over and over and over. Fill up 15 pages if that's what it takes for you to start to remember that. Your brain processes that information in a different way than it does by just reading it or by hearing it. And that's another way that's going to make your brain remember that information. If you have to write down something 25 times in a row, pretty soon you're going to start to remember what it is that you've written down, even if it turns out to be something that is pretty challenging for you. So write it over and over and over again, and that will help you. Make sure to start any papers that you have for the class early. Don't wait till the day before. Plan out your time. Plan it out so that if you know you have a paper that's due in a week, you start writing it now. You'll have a lot of research papers when you get into college. Start by finding your resources. Bookmark your websites in your browser so you can go back to them. Write your resources early. Start writing the paper. Have somebody else read the paper once you get it done because they'll be able to catch things that you've spelled wrong or grammar errors or things that just sound really confusing and may be able to help you write a sentence better or write a paragraph better. So write the paper in time where you can print it off enough to give it to somebody else to let them read it to see what they think and then it gives you time to make adjustments before you actually have to print that paper off and turn it in. I've got everything covered for today that I wanted to discuss. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll have another video posted soon, probably within the next week or so. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.